Good morning, and this is Jean Roman at For Dragonflies and Me. Thanks so much for joining me here today for another episode of Gardening 101. And I'm super excited on today's topic. Um, this is something, uh, what I'm talking about today is something I have literally dreamed about having uh, for years, even when I was back on my farm, which I, I think back now and I think, why didn't I just have one? I had a grape arbor. I had a um, rows of raspberries, blueberries, asparagus. I had, I had a beautiful apple tree. Um, so I have always had perennial fruits and vegetables. And um, I really don't know why I never incorporated this uh, element into any of my other gardens at any of my other homes. So I was surprised by a friend uh, the other day who brought me this beautiful uh, tree. And so I'm going to talk about it. But if this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, again, I'm Jean Roman and you are at For Dragonflies and Me. And you may be watching this at my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com or you may be at my YouTube channel. Um, either way, thank you so much for taking the time out to learn about today's topic. Um, all I ask is that if you find value in this video, uh, please, please subscribe and smash the like button. And even better, do those two things, plus leave me a comment. Do you have an espalier? Do you want one? Have you ever, do you even know what it is? Um, so today's topic, I am going to discuss that. But um, as I always do with my Gardening 101 videos, I create beautiful PowerPoints with pictures, and then I read uh, what I've written, and then I go into other detail and I talk and, and we engage. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen now and pull up my PowerPoint and open it into a slideshow. And there we are. Welcome uh, to For Dragonflies and Me and for tips and tricks for the home and garden and today's a garden um i also do a lot of videos here for uh cooking i'm really busy in the garden right now so i was just thinking uh, i was like i have not done a recipe in like <laughs> a minute uh the last couple of recipes i did was uh, my homemade strawberry freezer jam and then my homemade strawberry rhubarb jam and then i also did a uh, uh rhubarb strawberry dump cake so that's what was in season I should do something with asparagus that's pretty much coming to an end now um but I, I'll, I'll throw together something with that but today's topic super excited it is the art of espalier and I actually went on to google <laughs> and got the pr uh, proper pronunciation. My grandmother was French and she never spoke a word of English until she was 18 years old. I'm Canadian and I took French in school right up until 10th grade. And um, I just did not have that brain for languages. But I always said, as, why did my grandma just always talk French to me? And uh, I don't really understand why she didn't. She actually raised me. <clears throat> so that is always a question I've asked. And to this day, I think it's because her and her brother and sister always spoke French and nobody else could understand what they were saying. So um, let's get into today's topic, though. And then let's let's learn together. Uh, this is something new for me. Like I said, I've never had one, but I've always wanted my own espalier. And I finally have one uh, because of some good friends of mine, Alan and Beth, uh, we were talking about this and they have a beautiful orchard at their home, but I helped my friend Beth uh, create her raised bed garden this year. <clears throat> She's never done that before. And um, so she was pretty tickled with it. And um, they were at a local greenhouse uh, near them and they saw these trees and they were like, oh, this is what Jean was talking about. And if you uh, recently saw my podcast uh, with Dawn Green from Dawn Gardens LLC, um, I also did a live at her place and she has some uh, beautiful espalier there. So I am gonna talk to you about that, but um, I'm really grateful that they purchased this for me. But um, as you all know, I'm pretty, a, a diehard for heirlooms and this tree actually has um six different apple trees grafted onto it and so there's a fuji there's a red delicious a yellow delicious um i'm sorry a macintosh and a yellow delicious a brayburn um 
oh, what's the other two? I, I cannot think of the other two, but I did a video, a live. So if you aren't following me on Facebook and Instagram, be sure to add for dragonflies and me, and um, you'll be able to see my tree. Um, and there's some pictures of it in here as well. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. I didn't. I did not put a picture in this uh, PowerPoint, but I do have my friend Dawn's in here as uh, at my blog as well. So um, have you even heard of what of, of the art of espalier? Um, if not, you're in for a treat. Espalier is a method of training plants to grow flat against a wall or fence, creating a living wall that is not only visually stunning, but also functional. With a little bit of patience and know-how, you can create your own living wall masterpiece so in today's beginner guide, I'm going to talk you to walk you through everything you need to know about espalier from selecting the right plants to pruning and training techniques. Whether you're a seasoned gardener or a complete beginner, this guide will give you the tools and inspiration you need to transform your outdoor space into a work of art. So grab your gardening gloves and let's get started on this exciting journey into the world of espalier. And I'm going to learn with you guys because my friend Dawn is giving me a bunch of tips and tricks. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful living wall in your outdoor space with an espalier. If you've been looking to add a touch of elegance and beauty to your outdoor space, believe me, friends, this is the information you are going to want. So this is a pear espalier. Um, but let's talk a little bit about it. Um, an espalier is a horticultural technique in which trees, shrubs, or vines are trained to grow flat against a wall or fence. This technique has been used for centuries in Europe, particularly in formal gardens, to create stunning living walls and to maximize space in small gardens. And if you just watched my video on trellising tomatoes and vertical gardening, this is a way to vertical garden. Um, and like I said, create walls. And so this is an exciting uh a new venture for me that I'm so excited to share with all of you. But espaliered plants not only provide a beautiful focal point in the garden, but they also offer practical benefits such as providing privacy, shading, and reducing noise and pollution. Um, so noise pollution, sorry friends. Espaliering involves carefully pruning and training the plant to grow in a specific shape, such as a fan or a cordon. These are just inc incredible. And there's also several other variety or techniques, including a candelabra, which I have some pictures. Uh, but the the purpose of this technique is to maximize the plant's exposure to sunlight, air, and nutrients, which helps it grow stronger and healthier. And with proper care and attention, an espaliered plant can live for decades and provide a stunning visual display throughout the year, especially if you, especially if you live somewhere um, where you have sunshine all year. But look at this. Is that beautiful? That's, um, a, 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 um, oh my gosh. <laughs> total brain freeze, a lattice. I'm so sorry. There's a lattice or a checkerboard uh, pattern. And it's like, it's just beautiful. I always uh, think of a bon bon bonsai, bonsai uh, with an espalier, espalier. Um, and so this, in my opinion, is just it's so beautiful. And you can, you, you really want to use dwarf trees with this. But anyways, so what are the benefits? I mean, seriously, you know, why am I going to take all this time to train this tree to grow a specific way? But there are several benefits uh, to espaliering your plants. First and foremost, it allows you to maximize space in your garden by training your plants to grow flat against a wall or fence. So again, vertical gardening. This is particularly useful if you have a small garden or want to create a living wall in a narrow space. Espaliered plants also provide privacy, shade, and noise reduction, making them ideal for urban gardens or for creating a peaceful retreat in your backyard. Another benefit of espaliering is that it allows you to control the growth of your plants, ensuring that they grow in the desired shape and size. So this makes pruning and maintenance actually easier as you can easily access all parts of your plants or remove any dead or damaged branches. Additionally, espaliering can help you help to promote uh, better fruit production and improve the quality of your harvest. So again, I mean, in my at my farm, uh, you may have remembered this is many moons ago, but I had a huge apple tree and I think the last harvest we did we had 18 bushels and we made beautiful apple cider and some applesauce with them but without proper equipment like getting up into the tree 
it's almost impossible for just the home gardener to, you know, manage those trees. So that is one reason why I do recommend dwarfs for the home orchard. Um, those are, uh, you can get heirloom dwarf trees. Um, of course, you know, you have to decide on what you want to do and how, what kind of trees you want. But Espaliering your trees can really provide, you know, not only fresh fruit for you and your family, manageable as well, manageable amounts instead of, you know, 18 bushes, bushels of apples. What are you going to do with 18 bushels of apples if you are not a person who is providing, you know, canning food, applesauce and, and all these things for your family? I'm not saying you shouldn't do that or you can't do that, but for the for the average home gardener, you're not looking for 18 bushels of apples. I was at the time, um, but I am not anymore. I will be happy with just being able to fresh eat apples off this um, Maya Spaliard tree. So um, thinking about that. So, you know, always think about what are your goals? You know, what is what is the reason you're doing this? Are you just doing it for a beautiful and elegant aspect to your garden and your home? Because you technically don't even have to have a vegetable garden to have an espalier, espalier. Oh my gosh. And um, my grandmother would be like, Jean-Anne. <laughs> so my name is Jean Ann and it's, but, but everybody has always called me Jean and that was my grandmother's name too. But having this as just a privacy wall in your yard, especially if you do incorporate uh, formal gardens, I'm a big cottage gardener and, uh, but this really fits in with any um, aesthetic that you are utilizing in your garden space and which is why I just love it. And again, you can create different uh, designs with it to fit into your scheme of things. So there's the beautiful apples. Uh, so types of plants that are suitable for espalier. So not all plants are, and you really wanna make sure that you are choosing the proper plants. Um, so, um, you also need proper growing conditions. So most of, so some of the most popular plants for espalier include fruit trees, such as apples, pears, and peaches, as well as ornamental shrubs like camellias, roses, and wisteria. Vines such as grapevines and climbing roses are also great candidates for espaliering. And so this is not just for an apple tree. So if you're like, well, I don't want an apple tree or fruit tree, but you want roses, there you go, friends. You can do it with that as well and uh, create beautiful and stunning um, spaces for your, your yard. So when you're choosing a plant for espalier, um, it's important to consider the plant's growth habit, vigor and disease resistance. You also want to choose a plant that is well suited to your climate, obviously, and soil conditions as this will help ensure its success. And you do not want to just haphazardly start this because, you know, for one thing, they're not cheap. You can get an a spaliard tree anywhere between 60 to 150 dollars depending on the size and um you know how many if it's got grafted or if it's just one fruit um but yeah so you want to take all those things into consideration so you want to choose a plant again that is well suited for your area some plants may require additional support such as a trellis or wires to keep them upright and stable which mine are going to be growing my spaliard tree is going to be on my bamboo wall that i built so choosing the right location for your espalier plant, choosing that location uh, is crucial to your success. And you want to choose a spot that receives plenty of sunlight. If you're planting a fruit tree, you also want to ensure that it has enough space to grow and that it won't be shaded by other structures and plants. In addition to considering your plant's needs, you also want to think about the aesthetics of your living wall. Choose a location that will showcase your espalier plant and that will complement the other elements in your garden. So like I was talking, about, you know, I have cottage gardens and that is, you know, I feel that my espalier uh, tree is going to fit in with my uh, raised bed garden as well as the rest of my landscaping. So uh, consider the backdrop against which your plant will be growing as this can also influence the overall effect of your living wall. So, um, you know, utilizing materials that you have, so poles, stakes, uh, fencing, uh, whatever it is going to be. A lot of people actually use stakes like what I have in this picture here and then wires. So it's almost invisible. Um, and then the, the espalier plants are tied and trained to those. So thinking about, again, your location uh, for where you wanna put it. I'm actually thinking that, so my tree is up against that privacy fence. And if you've been watching my reels and my lives and, and, and everything that I've been doing in the garden, you'll see it's a very faded, 
privacy fence, very ugly. And so where my patio area is, I planted a living wall of grasses, which I'm so excited. They're already really growing beautifully. And I know within next summer uh, and definitely in two years, they will cover that fence. Um, I did just recently find out that it is our fence on this property. And so I could have painted it uh, to match my privacy wall where I put the planters with that like beautiful green. But Dave was just kind of like, let's we already spent so much money on grasses let's let that cover it up so but i'm really considering uh doing something to the fence in the uh garden so maybe painting it white or maybe painting it that green i'm just not sure because is it gonna look funny uh, just painting the one section and not the whole fence. And so again, choosing the right location, thinking about the aesthetics. So those are all things that I'm doing right now before I plant that plant. Uh, but uh, I'm sure I'll figure it out and I'm excited to share it all with you guys. So preparing the soil for your espalier. Uh, you really need to take this into consideration. It's important to prepare the soil to ensure that it has nutrients and drainage. It needs to support healthy growth. Begin by removing any weeds and debris, obviously, from the area where you're going to be planting. And then dig a hole that is slightly larger than the root ball of your plant. So taking into consideration the pot. So you want to plant the pot, the, uh, the plant soil lever, lever level uh, but you do want it to be a bit larger and then you definitely want to mulch it uh, so definitely mix in some compost well rotted manure to improve the soil structure and provide nutrients for your plant so if your soil is heavy or clay like you really want to consider uh, amending it with maybe some uh, sand or perlite to improve the drainage because you definitely do not want clay soil for any type of fruit tree uh, and once you've prepared the soil uh, you're going to be ready to plant your failure to plant and begin pruning and training process so pruning uh, is the key to successful espaliering as it allows you to control the growth and shape of your plant. The goal of pruning is to create a framework of branches that will support the plant's growth and provide a visually appealing shape. So the first step in pruning for your, for your espalier is to select the branches that will form the main framework of your plant. So my espalier already has that. And I really recommend that if you decide to uh, incorporate this into your garden, I would buy one that is already pretty um, trained and you can, and it's not going to cost you a lot more. I personally would not recommend like, here it is, this giant apple tree and I'm going to start training it. I mean, if you want a project, great, go for it. More power to you. And I'd love to see the results and your process. I would love to. And uh, how long did it take? Tell me if you've already done that. I definitely want to hear about it in the comments. Please let me know. And uh, I might even want you as a podcast guest and, you know, kind of talking to me about it. But um, this is something that, you know, I am so grateful for the one that my friends brought me because it is 100% six perfect branches and with a perfectly trained center, uh, central stem uh, trunk. And I I could not be happier. But um, if you do decide to create your own and go right from gung ho for, and like, I'm doing this all, I am so proud of you. And I am like, you're a better person than me. But these branches should be sturdy and well positioned. So when you're choosing that plant, this is a key and you want to make sure it's got a straight trunk as well. So you'll need to remove any branches that are competing with your main stem framework and that are growing in the wrong direction. So we're going to talk about which style and the shape that you want. So this is key before. So you really need to do a little bit more research than what I'm providing here um, and decide okay I want a candelabra I want a fan I want a cordon um, and there's many I want a um, lattice work so and thinking about that and then researching on how you will obtain that uh, shape and style. So as your plant grows, you're going to need to continue pruning to maintain its shape and promote healthy growth. This may involve removing dead or damaged wood, thinning out overcrowded branches, and shaping the plant as it grows. Uh, so without proper pruning, your failure tree uh, will or plant will grow into a stunning living wall that will provide beauty and function to your outdoor space for years and years and years. So 
techniques for creating the perfect disfailure pattern um, depends on a few things. So some of the most common patterns include a fan, uh, which is the third picture, um, the cordon and the diamond. So uh, actually, and I'm actually going to talk about the candelabra, not the diamond, but the diamond is actually the what I was calling the lattice. So the pattern you choose will depend on the type of plant you're growing, as well as your personal preferences and the space you have available. So there is a candelabra. I mean, seriously, is that like beautiful and stunning? And so thinking now, as you know, I was talking a bit, uh, a little bit ago, um, look at the branches. That is an older tree too, because if you look at that trunk, that trunk is older and you can see the central trunk, but then at the center, right about the middle point, you can see it's a, a, a younger trunk. You can see that was a branch that they trained upward. So each of those, um, branches horizontal branches have been trained and if you know what a candelabra is each of those verticals so they have the horizontal and then the vertical which is where the your candle is right and it's just magnificent i mean think about that coming into your yard especially if you have the right space but you know don't be dismayed if you think oh i don't have some massive grand brick wall like that it's okay you can actually have this growing up the side of your house if you have a brick house 100 i've seen that and it's beautiful so use your imagination right i always talk to you about you know the the, the it is whatever you want to do is limited primarily by your own creativity. And yes, I know funds and, you know, financial, and that is all obviously a, a factor in it as well. But even if you buy a baby apple tree, you can do it. You know, it's like, there are ways there's bartering, there's plant swaps where you can go on your, your uh, next door app, um, Facebook marketplace. Uh, there's all different ways people barter, you know, somebody might have something that's like, well, you know what, if you do this for me, then you can do this or you can have this. So again, imagination, creativity, think outside the box that I'm huge for thinking outside the box. So Three, the three that we're going to talk about here is the fan pattern involves training the branches to grow out from the main stem in a fan shape. I'm going to show you guys a picture. Uh, this is the simplest and easiest pattern to create and is ideal for beginners. So if you want to try it out, do that one. This is the candelabra. So this pattern involves training the branches to grow up and then out from the main stem, creating a shape that resembles a candelabra. This pattern requires a bit more skill and patience than the fan pattern, but it can be very rewarding. And, and as long as you're patient, the horizontal cordon pla uh, pattern involves training the branches to grow out from the main stem in a horizontal line. This pattern is more complex than the fan pattern, but can be used to create a very neat and tiny espalier. That is actually what my uh, espalier plant is. I could get it to go up like this though in the kind candelabra and if I was going to be in this home longer than I am I think I would we'll see so there's a fan uh this is a fan uh tape and you can see here uh this is up against a house you can see the slat it's a wood house and uh, so they actually put some hog panel on the back and they're training it up like that so again there's different ways and believe me if you live up north in the country in a, in a rural area there are auctions all the time and you can find hog panel it's pretty inexpensive if you go to like a tractor supply or one of a store similar to that like a, a farm and supply store a hog panel isn't crazy expensive and you would just need one to start and then you know as it as you, you determine the size of it so that is a pretty inexpensive way and if you you're depending on the color of your house it kind of blends into and then that tree will cover it up a lot as well so but caring for your espaliered plant is key also for success so you really wanna make sure that you are thinking about all of its needs. And this includes watering it regularly, fertilizing it when necessary and protecting it from pests and diseases. Uh, to water your espalier plant, make sure that the soil is moist, but not waterlogged. So you, like I said, you don't want a clay soil. Water deeply once a week or more often if the weather is really hot and dry. And especially the first year you are uh, planting it, you want those roots to get really established so that it will be able to be hard 
dirty. And uh, if you have a hard winter, you definitely want to mulch it. Um, to fertilize your spillage plant, use a balanced fertilizer such as a 10-10-10 formula once a month during the growing season. And this will provide your plant uh, with the nutrients it needs to grow and produce fruit or flowers. Um, so to protect your spillage plant from pests and diseases, keep a close eye on it and take action at the first sign of any trouble, which is what I tell you guys, even with your, um, you know, utilizing organic methods, preventative uh, maintenance is the best medicine uh, to protect anything, your flowers, your, your vegetables, your trees and whatnot. So um, this may involve using organic pest control methods such as insecticidal so soaps or neem oil or removing affected branches and leaves. Uh, one thing that a lot of orchards that uh, care for their trees organically, they use an organic clay and it's kind of like a um, a spray that they spray on their trees. And you can also use some netting as well for to protect it from birds, but you really want this to be beautiful. So you don't wanna put nettings on it. So some, and so this is, you can see using carefully uh, just some garden twine and they are just uh, training that branch along a bamboo uh, pole similar to what I'm gonna be doing. So some mistakes I would like to share with you to help you avoid um, are, you know, these include choosing the wrong location for the plant, choosing the wrong type of plant, failing to prune the plant properly and, fa and failing to provide the plant with the right amount of water and nutrients. You know, just like people, you gotta feed it and water it <laughs> and provide it. You know, you can't stick somebody out in the sun and not give it any food and water. Well, a plant is the same thing. So to avoid these mistakes, make sure that you choose a suitable location for your plant, which we talked about. Choose a plant that is well suited to a spalering, which we also talked about. Learn the basics of pruning, which is simple. You can find that anywhere on Google or find a book and provide your plant with the right amount of water water and nutrients. So creating your own espalier is espalier is a great way to grow plants vertically and make the most of your garden space. So by choosing the right plants, preparing the soil, pruning the branches carefully and providing your plant with the right care, you can create a beautiful and productive garden that is sure to impress. With a little bit of patience and practice, anyone can become an expert at espaliering and enjoy the many benefits of this technique. So if you enjoyed this episode, um, please, like I always say, smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, and they give me a comment. Let me know what you thought about it. Did you feel like I provided you with enough information? Have you, do you, have you already done an espalier? Um, send me pictures. <laughs> you can email me. You can find my email at my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com. So to see more episodes like this, definitely visit me at my blog and here at my uh, YouTube video. So as always, I certainly hope I have encouraged you to grow your own food. And again, don't be dismayed if you don't have a yard to garden in. Container gardening is a great alternative. And if you live in a uh, climate that is sunny year round, you could actually do this um, in a pot uh, with a smaller plant. So again, if you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to smash the subscribe and like button. And uh, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I have daily reels and do lives and I'll walk you through my garden and uh, share what I'm doing. And I love to do that. I love to hear from you. I love communication with all of you. So one more time, smash that subscribe button, smash that like button and leave me a comment. So thanks so much for joining me here today. And uh, be sure to check out my blog at, for Dragonflies and Me. I have a podcast that I talk to incredible people uh, and my social media platforms. But now I'm going to stop sharing so again, you know, I really appreciate you all taking the time to be here and sharing your time with me. And I always want to provide great content for you. So as I always say, I'm going to sign off now. And I would love for you to remember to eat fresh, shop local, and have a happy day, friends. Take care, and I'll see you in the garden or the kitchen.